Hey there folks, today we're going to be looking at some fun stuff. The new script top is out and we're going to look at how to use it in a real-time OpenCV workflow to get this kind of cool feature tracking going on. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything I have in my network here except for my video device in. You could use anything you want for this. You could use video device in, movie files of basically anything people, um, and really anything. And we're going to plug this into an OpenCV workflow. And that's where the script top really is going to shine because if you've ever tried to do any of these kind of OpenCV workflows or any of the workflows involving like machine learning or getting some web data, you've probably ended up experiencing the problem where once you have your NumPy arrays, getting those into a texture is really hard. And often what we've seen with our workflows is saving those to a file and then having a separate movie file in that reads those files that we're constantly saving and updating. But this can become quite a bit cumbersome of a process and really doesn't work well in real time. With the new script top, which just got released, we can actually take those NumPy arrays and drop them directly into a top texture that makes these workflows so, so much easier. And actually today what we're going to do is if I open up my browser here, I'm just going to grab one of the examples straight off of OpenCV's website. This is the Harris Corner Detection. And this is a kind of feature tracking that's really good for doing calibrations for cards or anything like this, or just trying to find general features inside of a texture. If you're on the OpenCV website, you'll see that that's one of the first ones that you'll do as you're kind of learning OpenCV. And that's why I'm using it just because it's a simpler example, but there are so many different ones. And a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about with this example are going to equally apply to all of the other examples. So you don't need to know all the math for this. Let's be real. We just need to get to the code, the example code. And I would recommend if you are going to be using a lot of these algorithms or techniques, you do read about how they work, what they're going to be detecting. But for talking about the implementation, I'm just going to jump down to the example code here. And the first thing I'm going to do is maybe do a little bit of a split screen action where I have my touch designer on the left and I have my OpenCV documentation on the right. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. And essentially, once we make our new script top, we're going to see by default NumPy is already imported. We're going to see it's generating some random numbers and putting a bunch of colors on the screen, which is great. But we want to go really quickly deeper than that. So the first thing I'm going to do is open this inside of Sublime. And I'm going to go ahead and we don't really need any of these custom parameters so I can delete those. And I can even go ahead and delete all of the boilerplate code that is in our on cook area. But that's where we're going to be working mostly. So the first thing we know is that import NumPy is at the top. Now, when you're working with NumPy in regular Python, you're almost always going to see it imported actually in this format, which is import NumPy as NP. And this is going to be important because especially if you're referencing a lot of different tutorials on the web, they're going to have sections where when they call NumPy, for example, uh, let's see, in here there is one, uh, let's do a search for NP, there it is. They're going to say NP.float32. And if we were to just copy and paste this into our example, it would fail because we haven't imported NumPy as NP. So there's two options for what you could do here. One of them is you could go into your script top and just immediately change this so that it's kind of more of that standard Python workflow by adding as NP. Or you could just keep an eye out during the writing of your script and if you find something that says NP, you know that it's referring to NumPy and you would replace NP with NumPy. I'm going to go ahead and update my import script because I think that's going to make most people's lives uh, a lot easier while they're working with Python and NumPy and all these kind of OpenCV libraries and examples. Now. The really cool thing about the script top is how it works with some of the other features that have kind of existed inside of Touch Designer behind the scenes for a little while, which is the ability to take all of the data out of a top texture and turn it into a NumPy array. Now, if you want to see how that works, what I could do is, first of all, I'm just gonna put a null after my video device in here, because we are gonna put some little magical secrets in between here. But I could go to the Python help for my null top and I could scroll down here and very quickly in the methods I would see one called numpy array and this takes the whole top texture and gives it back to me pre-prepared in a numpy array 
that is a 32-bit floating point uh, full of data. Now, that's really great. And as I was saying before, you know, if we we're working with machine learning and OpenCV and all these other kinds of things, we would have already been exposed to this. But let's go ahead and start by adding this NumPy array as our form of input. Because what you'll see for a lot of these examples online is that they will read an image file. But we don't need to read an image file. We're working in real time. So I'm going to open up my script here. And the first thing I'm going to do in my onCook area is define my image here. So I can go ahead and type in image equals now, instead of doing a cv.imread, which is short for image read and sending it to this file name, I can actually hop back and actually grab the numpy array of any top texture that I want. So I can go to this op null one here. So let me go to op null one dot numpy array. And I would highly recommend in most cases you use this delayed argument set to true. It's just going to make the project less likely to have any hangs in relation to loading all this data into the NumPy array. You know, we all know Python is, is not the fastest of all the programming languages out there. And especially as this transition between the GPU and CPU data happens, you know, anything you can do to help your system run a little bit faster is probably a good thing. And this only really will affect it by about one frame or so. So I'd always go ahead and type in delayed equals true. And the cool thing is once we're here, essentially we have our input image you know, set now. We could almost go ahead and copy and paste all of the rest of this until the output and we could be up and running very quickly. Now I'm going to type out a bunch of this just so that we can kind of talk through it a little bit. Uh, you know, the first thing they're going to do here is make a grayscale version of the image, which is really common in a lot of open CV workflows because the RGB data really doesn't matter as much. And they're going to do cv2.cvt color. Now we're going to pass in our image and use the color. And in this case, this is set to BGR to gray format. We can even flip that to be an RGB to gray format. Then they're going to go ahead and transfer that into a third float32. So let's go gray equals np.float32 gray. Now this would be an area where if you didn't end up following with the import numpy as np, you would actually replace this with numpy and that would work as well. But since we did update our import statement, this is just going to be np. Then we're going to say dst equals cv2.cornerHarris and we're going to pass in the grayscale argument. And then you can see here it actually tells you what each one of these different values is going to be. We're not going to play with them too much because Frankly, you, you should actually read all of this page to know what these arguments do properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these as they are written here. And then we can see the result is dilated for marking the corners. We're going to go ahead and type dst equals cv2.dilate, dst and none. And then they're going to threshold it for optimal values. And, you know, by all means, this is no real CV workshop. This is just kind of showing you how to get this stuff up and running inside of the new script top, which is pretty exciting. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy exactly what is on the page here. 0 0.1 multiplied by dst.max. And this is essentially where we go through all the pixels in the image. And then we're going to give them the color blue if their threshold is a little bit is over that 0.01. .01. So in this case, you can see it's RGB here. Now, one thing to be careful of is if you try and do this exactly as is, and I'll show you what's going to happen in a moment. Actually, maybe we can save and see the error already. We can. Well, oh, import CV is not defined. Well, we forgot one of the most important things. We have to import open CV here. So let's actually go back to the top to our NumPy area import cv2, save that. And now we're going to see this value air, value array of shape three could not be broadcast into this other crazy number. And essentially this is a shape mismatch because this is working at an RGB kind of shape of a pixel. But in touch designer, we're almost always working at RGBA. So the only thing we have to do to make this work is add another number at the end and I'm going to go ahead and add my alpha channel of 255 and then we can see that error goes away. So that's something to just keep in mind if you are working through a lot of these different examples from OpenCV's documentation or Python documentation 
a lot of the time they're just working in RGB while we're going to be working in RGBA. And you'll notice that these values go from 0 to 255, whereas in Touch Designer, a lot of the time we're working from a 0 to 1 range. So that's just another thing to keep in mind as well. So now that we got that, we're kind of at the next tricky part, which is how do we get this out? You know, right now we essentially had our image that we sampled here into a NumPy array, we grayscaled it, uh, we calculated, you know, the DST, we've got our dilations here, we've got our features detected, and then we did a threshold for drawing blue pixels on them. But how do we now get that out? Now, in most cases, you're going to see something like this, which is cv2.imshow, which is image show. And then you're going to see a bunch of stuff about how to name that window, what texture to feed to it, um, how to quit that window, how to destroy it. If you see these things, we can essentially ignore those because we're going to use one of the really cool features and probably the most exciting feature of the script top, which if we open as Python help, is this method called copy numpy array. And this is almost the exact opposite of the previous NumPy array that we used because this NumPy array method takes a texture and then kind of rejiggles it down into a proper NumPy array. Whereas copy NumPy array, which is unique to the script top, does the opposite. It takes a fully fleshed out NumPy array and converts it back into a top texture. And that's really cool because what we can do is now at the end of our kind of processing here, I can say script op, because remember the on cook has an argument already script op, and that's the op which is cooking, so that's awesome. We can just use that to reference the script op itself. And we're going to say copy numpy array, and then all we have to do is feed it the array that we want to copy in this case to the texture, which is going to be this image that we've been processing. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now, when I save it, and actually it's probably already, you can see that I am lagging quite hard right now, and I'll just go ahead and save it. Firstly, like, cool, we, we already see in real time, we've got those feature and corner detections here. You know, if I hold up, uh, you know, something square, we can see nice and clearly all these different features on it. These are my little mint toothpicks. Look at that, look at all the details and, and corners of it being highlighted with that blue. But you are gonna see that the, Processing is quite intensive and this is something that you should know throughout your whole kind of open CV journeys and even machine learning journeys is that you often don't want to be working at really high resolutions and When I say high resolution at this point I'm even talking about a 1280 by 720 is kind of a high resolution and What you'll see for almost all of these workflows even though they're not kind of like overtly mentioned in this You know, they'll probably be talking about in the introduction to open CV or the core operations there's always a scaling down step that happens. And in Touch Designer, the easiest way to do this is to use something like a fit top, and then maybe set your resolution to be half. And you can see immediately once I set it to half, so now we're at 640 by 360, all of a sudden I'm running perfectly back at 30 FPS, getting that feature tracking happening inside of Touch Designer. This is really common, you know, I've written about this on our blog a couple of times, but you know, some common things you're gonna do whenever working with OpenCV is scaling down. That way you can do the analysis, get the data, and then place that back on the larger canvas of yours, the full resolution image. You're gonna be doing things like grayscaling, doing things like thresholding, and actually you can see that was even happening inside of our little example. Monochroming is very, uh, well, I just said grayscaling, but all of these kind of image processing functions that you do before you do you know, your feature detection or your object tracking are really going to be what help make it perform well and give you good results. Now, hopefully that, that's exciting because we literally took an example straight off of the OpenCV documentation, ported it into Touch Designer, and all we had to do was change one line at the top where we're going to get our input and one line at the end, which replaces a couple lines where our output would have happened, and we can get this stuff running within a matter of minutes. Now. This works with OpenCV. It's going to work with a lot of machine learning workflows and frameworks because they also rely on NumPy arrays and their own kind of objects. It's going to work with a lot of different encoding formats that you've probably seen if you've been working with um, Runway ML, things like the Byte64. Those kind of things have ways of getting them into NumPy arrays, which then would mean that you could just drop those straight into a script top and get those output. 
So we're really excited about the script top and I hope this helps you get started working with it ASAP. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.